All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, NVIDIA, for having us uh, this morning. Um, I'm Pierre Meur. I'm director of uh, strategy and alliances for um, uh, 3D and immersive and the Substance product. And this morning, uh, I'm happy to have uh, um, on stage with, with me uh, Guido to talk about uh, how uh, at Adobe we are embracing uh, open USD in our application. So I will, um, I will leave the stage to Guido and uh, have uh, some overview of what we are doing with OpenUSD. Cool, thank you, and good morning, everyone. So OpenUSD at Adobe. Uh, I want to start with uh, first to talk about a little bit of our interop strategy. As you know, Adobe offers many, many applications, and a key to that is really connecting those applications together. Um, USD is the technology, the OpenUSD is the technology. We really want to rely on it. We're hoping that uh, this is kind of the future we're, we've been hoping for quite a while, and looks like is little by little is becoming something like this, where a lot of the application, uh, third-party creative application, you know, uh, game engines, uh, are really relying on UST to be able to do uh, is a loss lossless um, interop. And so this is really super exciting to see. Uh, for us, also, what's really important is to start thinking what does it look like UST into the cloud. So there's not just like the UST files that people have been used to manage in their own project, but also how do you store and you retrieve it, because that brings into delivery and also bring portable and ultra-portable devices. So the, the one conceptual model here is to have, imagine that on the, on the left you have the creative and the authoring space. So you have applications that are really uh, on many surfaces and all the way also to taking pictures and delivering pictures to the cloud. The idea is to have USD our kind of core representation. So if you, you're working on a 3D asset and you're uploading it or you're taking pictures and you want to run some photogrammetry, photogrammetry um, in the Adobe Creative Cloud, we will actually store a USD file at the root. And then the USD file will have metadata and information about material, geometry, etc. And then from there, depending on where and how we need to deliver to client application and client, de client devices, we will actually produce GLTF and USDZ depending on the, on the requirement. So another thing important, the connection between GLTF and USD is quite a key here, uh, because again, for, especially for web consumption right now, that's, the, that's the, common, the most common standard. Another thing really uh, key, obviously, is not just USD and GLTF, but many file formats. So a few days ago, we announced that we're going to open source uh, a number of plugins for USD to be able to ingest FBX, GLTF, uh, OBJ, STL, etc. But not just ingesting, but also generating on the output. And the idea is, if you think about having application, if you go back to the first slide, if application understand well USD in a in a in a good and correct way, using those plugins, we can have a consistent way to produce all the other file formats or to ingest all the other file formats. So, from an Adobe point of view, we're hoping that. All, all Adobe products that manage 3D data will understand UST as import export, and these plugins will make this application automatically support the other file formats. Obviously, with the understanding that not necessarily everything can be preserved, but the majority hopefully will be uh, remain into the different uh, representations. So this is where we are today. We have the Substance 3D uh, suite where there's a pretty strong uh, integration with UST. It's been improving over the last uh, uh, two years. Uh, one application sampler is also integrating Hydra for a display. And Hydra is going to be integrated in more of the application. So we can bring not just our internal renderer, but also other third party renderers. Uh, in the same way, Omniverse uses Hydra and can integrate uh, different rendering engines. And I um, also want to mention Illustrator. Um, it, uh, historical Illustrator was a 2D vector application. And recently, they added some 3D capability. It's not a full feature 3D application. You can do extrusions and simple like logos in 3D. But we want to make sure that, again, that is our common representation. And so Illustrator also now support uh, USD and USDZ. After Effects, also uh, we're in conversation to bring assets into After Effects again, through the same format. And uh, the last uh, icon is the content. Uh, Adobe also has a pretty strong presence in the selling uh, content, materials, and geometry. And again, we want to standardize them around USD as well. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the material strategy. Because geometry, at this point, is not saying it's solved, but uh, it, it's uh, something that is not something 
people are not too worried about the geometry piece when you're thinking about different assets. But material is one of the biggest challenges right now. A lot of artists, they go from one application to the other and somehow colors don't look right, textures sometimes are even missing. And so what is our strategy here? Our four fundamental pillars are Open PBR. It's a recent development. It's a collaboration between Adobe and um, uh, Autodesk to merge Adobe uh, standard material and Autodesk standard surface into one new model, and we call it Open PBR. We're open sourcing it, and we're hoping that we're already having conversation with NVIDIA, with uh, Unity, with Epic to see if this can be a model that we can all build on top of it to make it a really uh, a standard material model. It will be part of Material X because this is the standard that we're choosing as our model to standardize both the illumination uh, nodes but also the pattern generation. SPSR is our standard for the texture procedure, procedural texturing system, and that will remain. And then ultimately, UST is the container that we use to carry the data across. And here is a little, maybe a little technical, but just to get an idea why it's in, sometimes people have a little, made a little bit of a confusion between what is substance and what is material X and what is UST. And those are those three pieces are really coming together here. If you think about a material, an open PBR material with the different uh, properties, Material X lets you do procedural shading, so you can change texturing and add patterns at shading time. The Substance Engine produces textures, uh, you know, is, is a procedural texturing system, so it actually produces texture map using a different set of functions. The two together really can achieve things that are really uh, extremely powerful because there are certain things you want to do in one place and certain things you want to do in another place. And so that's why we're trying to bring them all together using also UST as the connecting tissue. So UST will be able to read SPSR, procedural texturing, bring it into the Material X network and produce the render. And I believe uh, Omniverse is already leveraging the, 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 the SPSR plugin to bring substance textures and substance material into their system. So this is kind of a Again, general, uh, simple uh, composite model is, if you think about a, an application, S3 3D as a substance 3D application, this is all the pieces that we're really focusing on. So we're kind of a try to uh, harmonize the applications now to make sure they all, all think the same way when we think about kind of a pipeline. So they can all, you can plug in, in a different application in this pipeline and they, hopefully they will work seamlessly. Uh, before I go into the products, I don't know if you want to add something on the standards and... Martin is speaking, the, the, the AD on our end, and it's, it's culturally speaking with Substance uh, product, we always wanted not to break any workflow, but have uh, something that is as streamlined as possible. And so we started with SBSIR, we had a, a fairly large uh, adoption of SBSIR across many tools, and we want to have the same approach with, uh, with uh, USD and Materialix. And it's really something that uh, we're looking forward to, like the plugins you were mentioning. Yeah. OK, so start with uh, uh, Substance Scene Automation. This is a fairly new uh, product. We're starting actually in beta right now. We're working with a few enterprises. This is like an engine. It doesn't have a user interface. But the idea is, if I want to process 3D data, so coming from CAD products, from other third-party products, and I want to run Python scripts to be able to change the, change the scene, add things, remove things, do all sorts of like, you know, compute uh, the U layout, uh, do retopology. So what we wanted to do is to offer this kind of a low-level, you know, headless infrastructure that you can take 3D asset, process them, optimize them, and then you can either produce a render or generate a new output. This is going to be extremely valuable for us when we think, for example, e-commerce space where you have all sorts of assets and you need to prepare it for web. And so we, this is our pipeline to go through how do we do all this uh, processing behind the scene. Illustrator, I mentioned it before. You can now uh, ask to do uh, extrusion, uh, rotations, and then um, you can have a little bevel, you know, material. It actually used this substance material. So you can apply a substance material to the so I probably I didn't do an amazing job here, but just to put a quick, a quick one. And uh, you can export now USDZ, uh, and uh, you can export uh, you know, the different the version of USD. Actually, I want to mention one thing because it's a fun story. Uh, one of the things we're really pushing, I mentioned in a previous uh, presentation, was the, the ultimate place to be is to have a copy and paste between applications. So I talking to the Illustrator team, and he said, please, we should do copy and paste. And so, sure, we'll go ahead. We'll do the copy. 
and then realize that we still haven't implemented the paste on the other side of, the, of our application. Okay, great, so hold it. So now we wanted to uh, complete. But the idea would be not even needed to export files. You're here, you copy, you go to another tool, for example, where you can do staging or you can do a, more, a little bit more uh, high quality render. This is a, a visualizer that brings also path tracing to the mix. How we can make it super quick without even worrying about where do I put the file, where do I, just uh, if, especially if you're still working, you want to iterate, you want to do this thing as fast as possible. The other uh, application is Stager. Uh, it's used for like, a, a, the name says it all, it's just a staging application. And uh, recently we added again the ability to export uh, USD files. There's one thing I wanna make a mention because this would be a key aspect as we move forward with USD. As you can see, there are two options for the materials. One is uh, Adobe standard material and one is USD preview surface. One of the great uh, capability of USD is to be able to encode Potential, if needed, multiple version of the material models in the same file. For example, here, since Adobe, and, and this is actually one of the reasons why we want to do open PBR, Adobe has its own material model. And so here you have the option to save the Adobe material model and the preview surface that is the most standard one. So this means that this USD on every platform will pick up, except for Adobe, it will pick up the preview surface. On the Adobe case, it will pick up the Adobe standard material. As we move forward, that should turn into hopefully Material X. So we'll say export Material X, but also export the preview surface for those systems that still don't support Material X. And here again, I've just, I just explained it a little geeky, but just the idea that you can do this kind of encoding that gives you that opportunity. And you can put as many as you want, not that you wanna put 50 shading models in there, but uh, you have that flexibility. And this is one of the key aspects also of UST, really to give that uh, customizability behind the scene to really uh, improve the interop. And here we go, those are the, those are the, the, the bags uh, rendered. Um, same thing with Painter. Painter is obviously is our flagship uh, product. We have a lot of use in so many industry. Uh, and uh, same, same thing, we're trying to integrate UST uh, as much as possible. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about Painter, how it's used in the industry today. Yeah, definitely. So to, to your point, like it's our flagship product and it's like 95% or 99% of the AAA studio are using Painter to texture video games. Nothing new here. But um, we also have been expanding the, the usage of uh, Painter in, in other industry and especially automotive, footwear and apparel. And, uh, and here it's, it's key to have uh, one definition of the, of the same asset. And especially in those industry also Illustrator is, is very used. And the, it's, it's a turning point that now people in Illustrator are manipulating 3D sometimes without knowing they are doing it, either through materials or through geometry. And it's, um, it's a key element in our strategy and that's also why this talk is Adobe as a whole. It's yeah. like we see USD across every tools, even tools that you don't think that are 3D first, uh, they definitely are manip manipulating 3D. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a painter, same thing. We added uh, some interesting capability. You can import uh, files, uh, UST files. You can tessellate and subdivide them. Also on the, on the other side, you see there's a panel that allows, if you bring something really big, you can select a subgraph and it's okay, don't bring the whole scene. Uh, sometimes UST is used for, I mean sometimes, often for shots in production. And so you don't want to bring the whole thing because maybe you're working just on a specific asset. So these are all sorts of customization you can do on import. And the same thing when you are on the export, you can choose to export USD, you can choose the material model, and the system will produce the texture map. You can embed it in USDZ, or you can have it uh, separate uh, from the file itself. An interesting thing we added is the ability, and this again comes with the power of USD. Imagine that you're working already on USD files and Painter comes in, Painter recognizes that if you're working on a USD file already, it will add a layer on top of the existing file. So it's not gonna rewrite the whole thing. It's simply gonna say, whatever I'm doing in Painter, I'm just overriding with the material data on top of the original file that comes in. So the material file is one produced by uh, Painter and it just simply does this. And it's simplified because the, you can now load, and if you change the original file, let's say you change the geometry, you can just reload the, the result of it and automatically you get the material. This is how you start collaborating among multiple people because there may be a person with the model and a person with the, the material. Here's the final render for my painter. Uh, modeler, as well as our uh, VR and desktop application for sculpting. 
it produces ginormous meshes and uh, it's been kind of the UST is becoming the most common file format used, especially because of the amount of data that gets produced uh, uh, as an export. Again, there's a, a bunch of uh, parameters there. And again, all the other file formats, by the way, modular export, uh, GLTF or OBJ, etc., it just kicks in using the plugin. So I know there is a kind of a double jump. You do UST and then whatever is the other file format, but we thought that the time taken to this extra step it was well worth it because we have a consistency how we produce all the other formats. And this is a result of uh, a modular asset uh, in an Unreal Engine. I don't know if you if you've seen on our booth, but we're also displaying um, a project that our Art and Dev team did um, oh, yeah. using, um, using USD and Omniverse, for instance, where they've been gathering a bunch of uh, assets that were coming from modular, as here, but also with uh, uh, ZBrush, Cinema 4D, and getting everything together in the same scene. Um, so it could be here, it's Unreal, it could be Omniverse, it could be yeah. um, other platforms. And finally, Sampler uh, is our uh, tool to uh, they now add a, a photogrammetry capabilities. So here I scanned a bunch of pictures and uh, the system can redo uh, the reconstruction from these pictures. And again, same thing, you can save in multiple uh, file formats. Uh, the, what's nice about Sampler also does not only you know, creates the asset, but also recreate the material with the different uh, layer, texture layers, etc. And here again, the uh, final object. Uh, last, I wanted to just show was an uh, interesting development in the, for us in the UST space is, uh, space is adding NERF capabilities to UST as a schema and to Hydra for the rendering, because we believe is actually is going to become quite interesting as a new asset type, especially for e-commerce. So, we wanted to bring this kind of a asset type into the mix like any other asset and be able also to intermix a CAD file and a NERF asset because so many times uh, people have the CAD data, but sometimes it says, I only have the final object, I want to just take pictures. And you can, you can get a level of quality that is uh, quite impressive. You can get a, a quite a good level of performance. And so that's why we want to bring those together into the mix. And I think that's it. I've tried to stay into the... Allocated time. Uh, thank you for having us. And uh, any questions?